welcome to another Women in Business interview. I'm here today with Mafer Hernandez. She is Associate Product Manager at Forto and an alumna of the full-time MBA program. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you for joining us, for sharing your story, and welcome to our new series. Great, um, and thanks to you for having me. I would love to know what brought you to HHL and um, how you discovered the school in the first place. Um, so after about five years working as a project manager at a PPO in El Salvador, um, I decided it was time to take the next step in my career and study an MBA. Uh, and Germany was uh, the primary candidate since I had been studying here as part of a student exchange in my bachelor's um, a few years back. Um, so I knew I wanted to come back to Germany, study here and work here as well. Um, so when I was doing my research for schools, I mainly focused on Germany and I found HHL. I really liked the city. Um, the experience in the admissions process was also very nice. So my decision was not very difficult to make. Um, and yeah, that was essentially how I came to HHL. So one of the best decisions I think I've made. I'm really glad to hear that. And also, I know that you found your current employer through an event at HHL. So there's a lot of different events that kind of focus around career events, um, bringing in partners um, and companies that might be of interest to the students. Uh, tell us a bit more about what kind of event that was and, and why that led you to want to work at the company you're working at today. Yes. So um, at HHL, that's also a really nice um, offering. And one of the parts or ra rather one of the factors that led me to also decide for HHL was the amount of networking and contact with companies that that is happening throughout the program itself. Um, so we have events from networking at on campus and then also company visits. And this is how I um, got to know about at the moment Freight Hub, now called Forto, um, as one of the um, company visits that we did in Berlin. Um, and funny story, we actually were not supposed to go visit Freight Hub. We were actually supposed to visit another company um, that decided or rather canceled at the last minute. Perhaps there was no availability. And then Forto was super flexible and um, welcomed us with open arms, so to say. Um, and it was a really nice visit. Um, the current CEO was there. He visited us for five to 10 minutes in his busy schedule. So that was also a really good impression to me of the company saying, hey, um, we care about people who can visit us and we want to also attract more talent. So why not get the CEO also involved in the visit? Um, overall, it was a really nice experience. We got to know about all of the different departments. A representative of each area was there. And then at the end, we had a meet and greet with also the representatives from each of the different departments. So um, it was also nice to get to know about what everybody does, what the company is doing in general and how everybody relates to each other. Um, and at the moment, I didn't really think much of it. Um, I it was like, okay, nice. Um, this is a company that may be good to work at in the future. Um, but once I was looking for my internship, I remembered that this was a good, enjoyable experience. Why not try my luck? see if I can um, get a job there. I ended up getting my internship there back in September, 2019. Um, and since I have remained on full-time and have been working there for about a year and a half now. You are now associate product manager. I know product management can be many things. So what does that mean for you and for Foto? What do you do? Sure, so um, I'm gonna use the words of a very influential people in the product space, and that is Marty Kagan. Um, he defines a product manager as a person who is able to discover a product that is valuable, that is usable, and that is also feasible. But what does that actually really mean, right? Um, so we need to take three different aspects before we really can do our job well. Let's first of all, look at the business. So what is valuable to develop for the business? Um, and that can be either for internal users, if you're developing internal tool, or towards customers as well. So what means value to them. Um, then we go into the user experience aspect. So how, how is a product usable? Um, how do we make the experience very smooth, easy to use, and a product that sticks? Um, and then finally, we have the aspect of feasibility, and that's coming from engineering or technology. So what is actually feasible to build, to develop? Um, what is the effort that comes behind it? So those are, let's say, the three aspects that are balanced within product management um, role. 
but there's a little bit more to that. So uh, once you know what is that sweet spot, then you need to develop a vision for how you will get there. Um, and you need to also prioritize what to build and when based on how much value it will bring versus the effort that it takes to build it. Um, and then last but not least, you also need to focus on not just delivering a feature, so not the output itself, but the outcome. So what is the business result that you're driving? What is, what is the metric that you're, that you're um, influencing? What is the impact of what you want to, to build, right? So um, it's not only about managing multiple stakeholders and multiple aspects of the product that you're building, uh, but then also making sure that you, you are building the right things in the right way and in the right priority, so to say, especially in a scale-up environment where um, the company is rather growing a little bit faster than the internal teams are, then prioritizing becomes even more critical to do well. For anyone not as familiar with Photo, um, how would you describe them? What, what's their mission? Um, what do they do? Sure. Um, so Forto is um, aiming to build the backbone of global trade. Um, we're a digital freight forwarder um, with offices in Germany and in several parts of Asia. Um, and we're essentially performing freight forwarding for many, uh, many companies in um, Germany and now currently expanding also into Denmark um, and in the future, of course, other countries. Um, and the way that we do that is with our technological products where we also want to make shipping goods or shipping products as easy as sending an email. So trying to not only build the backbone of global trade, but also make it super easy for um, the logistics manager at Home24, for example, to um, ship their products from Asia to Europe. I think that's a super important um, infrastructure that you guys are building because it's such has so many people involved and I'm sure it's a quite a task to bring it into a digital environment. Definitely it's it's a very very complex process with multiple people involved at origin at destination um, so bringing visibility to customers of where their goods at what stage of the process they're at but more importantly alerting them about delays um, is super invaluable in, 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 in this industry. Um, and that's one of the ways where the whole digital movement of freight forwarding has made lives easier to companies, because in the past, this was all very manual, paper-based, information took days to reach companies, and now we can offer essentially 24-7 real-time transparency of, of what's really going on in the supply chain. I know that you also really focused on finding a job in Germany, because you mentioned earlier you'd already lived in Germany as a student, and it it was a country that kind of sparked your interest and you wanted to come back. I'm imagining there was probably a few surprises um, coming to Germany and working here full time. Would you, would you like to maybe take us um, back to that time and, and share some of the like surprises that you were facing coming to work in a German culture? Yes. Um, so as, as someone coming from a Latin American work culture where everything is very rigid and controlled. Um, that was perhaps one of the surprises that I found at Forto, and it was the flexibility of your working hours or your breaks, but that comes hand in hand with accountability, right? You need to deliver results. It doesn't really matter if you're at the office 10 hours a day, as long as you deliver. Um, so that, that was one of the first let's say surprises that I encountered because you hear a lot about the German work culture, how it's all very structured and rigid and um, processes needs to be followed um, by you know, the rule. Um, another thing that I found really surprising was how international actually um, the company that I'm working at is. Um, I did not really expect that. Um, usually you think about German company being mainly filled with German people, even if the working language is English. Um, nevertheless, of course, this, this was a startup, now a scale up, so it makes sense that there is more international people, but it was still really, really surprising to see how many different nationalities are working there. Um, something else that was really, really surprising was how much um, management and everybody in general really cares about people as, um, as, as a person, right? Not only as an employee um, and how your, your let's say, um, well-being is much more important than you 
being at the office or on the clock. So if you're having a, I don't know, a bad feeling or not a hundred percent for work, rather you take some time off, heal, get better, and then come back a hundred percent the other day. And that's not something that you see in, in a work culture where I've been coming from in the past. Looking back on all the experience you've had now um, working for a company here in Germany and especially also for photo, what did advice do you have for maybe also young professionals in this transition, the cultural transition, um, coming from a different country, now working in a German environment, anything you'd like to kind of pass on from things you picked up? The first thing I would say or suggest is talk to people who are in this environment already. Try to quote unquote, educate yourself on um, how things are done in not only the country that you're aiming to work at, but also the company that you're targeting or companies that you're targeting, because sometimes this also becomes a criteria to decide on, on which offer to take, so to say, if you're lucky enough to have several offers. Um, but yes, definitely, definitely try talking to people, um, especially people who might have a similar background. Why do, do I advise talking to somebody from a similar background than you is they probably had challenges already that they learned from and can give really good advice on. Um, but then as a caveat, also be careful not to believe everything that you hear or not be scared about things that you hear. For example, um, specifically in Germany, you hear a lot about German people being super direct and um, telling you things in a very straightforward way. And that might not be something that you're used to. And that's true in some places, in some scenarios with some people also. So um, I, I do remember um, some conversations during my MBA where some people were saying, oh no, this is kind of scary and so on, but do not be scared. Be careful about what you believe and also what, how you internalize it. Um, and then maybe last but not least, um, be flexible. So think about the past experiences that you have had, how things were done in your previous company, but also realize that this is not the way that things are done everywhere or in every single company. So um, be prepared to, to understand what is going on in the company that you go into, but also flexible to adapt to, to the processes or to the work culture where you are at. At the end of the day, if you decided to go into a specific company, um, this is probably something that you already discussed or learned about in the past. Thank you so much for giving us some insights um, from your personal experience. I wonder what are your personal and also professional goals as a woman working at tech? Hmm, that's a really nice question. Um, I think one of the main reasons why I went into tech and, and product management specifically is having the ability to have an impact on a person's either <clears throat> daily life or on how they do their work, right? Because you might be the product manager for gorillas, for example, and, and have an impact on how people shop for their groceries. But at Forto, I can have a real impact on how people do their jobs in handling supply chain and, and, um, and also have an impact on how they communicate with other stakeholders or on how, as silly as it sounds, how easy it is for them to upload a document and it saves them a couple seconds versus um, going through a really strenuous process to make that happen. So being able to say, I was part of building that and now it helps people do things in a better way was a really big motivator for me to go into product management. Um, and let's say one of the goals that I, that I want to um, reach is being able to, to say that, right? Um, so right now I have had impact, but I want to have more impact. So not only um, a small thing like uploading a document, but something a little bit bigger. Um, and that's also going to be, give me a sense of accomplishment, so to say, because coming from a career that is a little bit different. So being a career switcher, being able to say I mastered product management is going to be a really good motivator for whatever comes next. Um, perhaps starting my own business in a couple of years or moving to a different company, who knows? Um, but yeah, that sense of, of self-pride and accomplishment is something that um, I think is going to come once I'm able to master product management. Um, and not only, it's not only about 
this itself, the, the product management career, but also the learning. Um, it's Fortune is a really fast paced company. And, and I know that's super cliche to hear about startups and so on, but this is really true. Things move really quickly. Um, the content is, is quite complex. The, the industry is complex. So therefore the content at, at work is also complex. Um, and I've been learning a lot about how to um, solve complex problems a little bit more efficiently um, and a little bit more about um, stakeholder management and communicating with people, which I think this is something that can be taken anywhere um, else that I go afterwards or anything else that I do. So being able to continue learning and growing uh, at a place that is growing itself and kind of like growing together um, is also something that, that I really value and um, that I was also kind of looking for when I was looking for a job. You've given us so much insight into your work and into your personal career. I wonder if there's anything that you'd like to pass on to graduates, um, young professionals, something you've learned along your way for anyone starting a career um, that might help them. Well, first of all, um, I would say really take advantage of the networking opportunities that are offered at HHL. Um, I think I'm a clear example of how things can come full circle. Um, so from visiting a company that you had in the back of your mind to now working there and building a career there. So you never know where the contact that you made or the information that you gathered are going to lead you down the line. So really, really do take advantage of those opportunities. Um, and then when starting into a job, um, learn about the industry. If you don't have experience there, especially if it's a complex industry. For me, I did have some background in supply chain and logistics before starting into in Forto, but the things I've learned along the line could have been really useful to learn maybe towards the beginning. Um, if I'd done a little bit more preparation, it would have made my onboarding process a little bit faster. That's it. Um, but more importantly, work on your communication skills and people skills, because at the end of the day, a workplace is about working with people and communicating with people. Everything else that is technical or very specific, you learn on the job. Um, but if you cannot communicate properly and, and build good relationships, then maybe your job is going to be a little bit more challenging than it could be. Um, and then maybe something else to do once you begin a new job would be Make sure you understand what people do and um, in which departments they are. So meet people, talk to people and, and understand what they do. Thank you so much for that advice. I'm sure we're all, all going to be able to profit from that. And also thank you so much again for joining me today, for sharing your educational journey, your professional career with us. And I can't wait to share it with more of our viewers on our YouTube channel, on our HHL blog, and I hope to speak to you again soon. Thanks to you for having me. It was great to talk to you today.